cheap guitars versus high-end, high-dollar guitars. What's the difference? What am I actually paying for when I buy a $5,000 guitar as opposed to a $500 guitar? That's what this video is going to be about. Uh, not, uh, you know, comparing guitars, but just talking about the differences of them and what you're paying for. We're going to talk about it right now. Well, welcome back, folks, to the host that never sleeps. Cheap guitars versus high-end guitars. There's a lot of questions come up during talking about that. A lot of questions been coming up in Facebook talking about it. Um, what are you paying for? What is the big differences? Well, sound, for one thing, is a major difference. It's true, a lot of uh, older, cheap guitars that have held up over the years, people said 50 years ago, that's a piece of junk, you know, and they've held up over 50 years or more than that and still play just like they did and sound like they did. That's because usually, not always, but usually, they are built like a friggin' tank, for one thing. Uh, some of them are really heavy, you know, because they are built so heavily. And because they've been taken care of, you know. But uh, what do you pay for? Well, several things you pay for. Like I said, sound is one thing. The main thing is that's what you pay for. But uh, the woods used in the guitar is uh, a whole lot of nowadays is you know why you see guitars for thirty thousand dollars and a hundred thousand dollars acoustics we're talking about some of this may apply to electric guitars but we're focusing mainly on acoustic guitars here uh, you remember back in the old day brazilian rosewood what kind of back and sides it got it's got brazilian rosewood on the back and sides well, you know, there's channels here on YouTube, reputable guys saying that it doesn't matter what kind of wood the guitar is made up of. It's the build and the thickness of the body and the size of the body and stuff. Well, it is all that, too. But no, no, uh, you're dead wrong if you think the woods don't matter and the glue and all this stuff. Uh, back to Brazilian rosewood. A lot of the old Martin guitars were made out of that. Um, you know, if woods didn't matter, why would companies like Martin and Taylor, and I'm sure Gibson used it too, all these companies went after Brazilian rosewood like it, you know, now it's almost extinct, Brazilian rosewood is, because they bought it all up, you know, and uh, you can check this out, don't take my word for it, Google it, and you can see, they, went, they then went after East Indian rosewood, okay, they bought all that up. Then it was Indian rosewood was big. If it's got Indian rosewood, it's cool. You know, they bought, they're in the process of almost finishing that up now. And, you know, there's also different qualities of rosewood. I mean, rosewood's like anything else. You can get a cheap quality rosewood, and you can get a very high quality rosewood uh, that resonates better, you know, with the... They tap tune a lot of these guitar tops to resonate at, uh, well usually around A440 standard tuning to resonate best around that pitch and some of them build for different pitches you know but anyways that rosewood some of it resonates a lot better than other uh, rosewood resonates some of it is stronger than other rosewoods but Brazilian rosewood was the very best and like I say it's practically all gone now yeah, uh, these companies, uh, Taylor will even tell you that it's, you know, you can hardly even find it for sale anymore. So if the woods don't matter, then why would these companies go and buy all this rosewood up? And they have, you know, bought it and stored what they didn't need immediately. They stored it. And, uh, you know, the woods make all of the difference in the sound of your guitar. Uh, Sitka Spruce Top versus Anirondack or Engelman, you know, there's all different types of tops, the woods they use for the tops, and there are all different grades of each of those woods, too. Uh, Adirondack, for instance, there's good Adirondack wood, there's cheap Adirondack wood, same with Sitka and Engelman, and, you know, that's a lot of what you're paying for, are those woods. Now, when you get a guitar and it's got inlay all over it, you're paying for that too and usually it's a very expensive guitar because a lot of crafts, craftsmanship 
and hours and time has, and work has gone into that, doing that inlay like that, laying it out that way. Uh, uh, but the, yeah, the build of the guitar does matter. The type of glue matters, and like I say, the quality of the uh, top and the back and the sides, the quality of that wood. Take this guitar here, for instance. This is that Sigma I've been working on. Now check it out. This is rosewood, back and sides. Okay. Well, you can bet, compared to my Martin guitar, which cost. What did it retail at $5,100, I think. It's got uh, rosewood back and sides, too. And it is a way, you can bet, it's a way better quality wood than this guitar has. And that's why it costs $5,000. You know, as opposed to what this guitar, this Sigma, would cost. That's what you're paying for, guys, is, that, is the woods and the craftsmanship, the work, and the sound. Of course, you got to get the sound in there. Uh... Cheap guitars, you know, they like this. This is a cheaper guitar. It's got rosewood. It's got the spruce top. You know, everything a, a high dollar guitar has got, but it's a lesser grade wood, a lower grade wood. Uh, it's got all the right woods in it, but it's a lower grade wood. Um, you take a, a high end guitar, okay? Usually, if you're playing it and you bust a string, the rest of the strings will stay in tune. But if you'll notice, cheaper, lower-end guitars, almost all of the time, if you're playing it and you got it perfectly in tune and you break a string, all the rest of the strings will go out a little bit. And that's that guitar, you know, it's not as solid or as uh, well-built as a higher-dollar-end guitar. I mean, you know, they don't move so much, the higher-dollar ones don't. Some of them do that's, you know, old and, and been through a lot or not taken care of properly. But... Uh, you know, that's one major, another major difference in low-end guitars and high-end guitars. Now, don't get me wrong, some cheaper guitars, you know, you break a string, it stays in tune, just like it did. But for the majority, most of them, you break one string, the whole guitar goes out of tune. And where on a high-dollar high guitar, it won't do that as bad, if at all, you know, because it's more structurally stable. Um... Intonation and discording, you get, you know, more of that on lower end guitars because of, uh, you know, how it's set up. More time was taken put into high dollar guitars to make them intonate as close to perfect as they can get them. Now, they leave you a little bit of room to play with. It's not perfect out of the box. Most of them, when you get up over 5000 bucks or so, they are. And, you know, people, different people consider uh, cheap in different ways, you know. I consider this as a cheap guitar to me. A, 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 to me, a guitar, you know, that you would pay or buy for less than a thousand dollars. To me, that's a cheap guitar. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I own several of them myself. But you know, I don't look at a, an instrument as being high dollar until you know you get up around a thousand bucks or over that, and you start. You can start figuring on, uh, you should start seeing some quality in the instrument, you know, or feeling it in the playability of it, the frets, and uh, and certainly the sound of it as well. I do have notes over here because I can't remember too good. Uh, oh, Graph Tech, man. I'll put a link down here. Graph Tech features one of my videos on their website. It was pretty cool, I thought. I'll put a link down here below, and you you guys can check it out. I think it was a... One of the truss rod videos. Uh, how you play is another thing you want to think about before you spend the money. You know, if you play uh, once a week, why would you want to sink five thousand bucks into a guitar? You know, a five hundred dollar guitar probably would be fine for you. Or you know, if you uh, where you play at, you know, if you play at home, if you play out, if you're on the road all the time, you might want something you know a little more expensive that you can rely on and count on. Especially if you only have one and you got a show to do and you get there and you open the case and holy shit, the guitar come apart. What are you going to do, you know? Pay a few more dollars to be assured your guitar is going to be ready to play that show when you arrive there. I don't play shows so much anymore. I haven't for a good while now. A couple years. Or, uh, yeah, two years. Anyways, I'll get back into it when I get my hands back, hopefully. 
But uh, yeah, that's got a big a lot to do with it too. If you just sat around at home and play, or you only play like once a week or something, chances are a five hundred thousand dollar, five hundred to a thousand dollar guitar is going to be fine for you. It'd be a fine guitar, you know, to play shows with if you if you trust it and you're happy with it and you can play it well and it sounds good to your ear. You like it, it's fine. I'm not knocking guitars that cost less than a thousand bucks because, like I say, I own several myself. But uh, they're no comparison to the one that I was just talking about that cost over $5,000. No comparison. There's no comparison whatsoever. When that $5,000 guitar is set up right, yeah, you guys have heard it here on the channel. Um, you know, it would depend a lot, too, if you were a serious musician and you played a lot every day or, like I say, played a lot of live shows, you know, or a recording artist or a recording uh, musician, studio musician, that's what I'm trying to think of. If you work, you know, at that, then you would probably want a high dollar guitar to sound as best as possible on, that, on those recordings because the mics and the equipment and uh, the things they have to record with today, I mean, you know, you can, uh, you really need to ha have the best sound, make the prettiest noise that you can. Because those mics and that equipment gets all of that stuff, just as it is. And there again, sometimes, you know, I played on a CD for a guy several years ago. And he wanted an old, crappy, like, uh, well, I call it crappy, there's nothing wrong with it. But it's like an old country, like a, uh, kind of like Willie's guitar, Willie Nelson's guitar with those uh, nylon or gut strings, whatever he uses. And he had an old, uh, what was that thing? It was an old Gibson like Florentine guitar. It had a oval sound hole in it. It was an arch top. And, and I thought the guitar just sounded horrible. But, you know, I wasn't used to that kind of guitar. But he said, this is what I want you to play. I want you to play this guitar on my CD. And I said, well, okay. <laughs> so I played it on his CD. And I didn't like the sound of it at all. But that's what the guy wanted. That's the sound that he was chasing. So, uh, you know, they have their place, man. And not that that was a cheap guitar. In fact, it was a very old, expensive guitar. It just didn't, I didn't like the sound that it had. It was a funky sound. But that's okay. If that's what you're looking for, it's fine, you know. Be it cheap or be it expensive, you know, it depends on what you, the individual, wants, not what someone tells you to get. I'm just pointing out, like, these woods and these different grades of woods and woods do make a difference. I mean, these uh, well-known uh, channels on here that people really look up highly to, I can't believe that they're saying that the wood doesn't matter in an acoustic guitar. Maybe not an electric guitar, but it, it's everything in acoustic. It matters big time. And then you have the different qualities of the wood, like I said, and the different places it came from. Brazilian rosewood was the wood to go after. They went after it. It's all gone. Companies were fighting over it to get there first. And then, like I said, East Indian Rosewood was next. And it didn't take them very long to get all of that. Then it was Indian Rosewood. And there's, like I say, each one of these, say like uh, Indian Rosewood, there's, uh, I don't know how many different grades of Indian Rosewood there are, but each one of these, East Indian, Brazilian, all have different grades of that wood from that location. And that's a lot of what you pay for, the woods, to get that guitar to sound like it does. That's what makes the difference in a, a $5,000 Martin guitar and a Sigma from 500 to to 1000 bucks guitar. Sound, quality, you know, and the whole thing. Cheers. Oh, man, that's cold. We all know this is 2016. I think you all will agree, we get what we pay for, right? I mean, if you go out and you buy a, uh, I don't know, a remote-controlled helicopter, you buy a cheap one, that's what you're going to get, you know? You spend the money, buy an expensive remote-controlled helicopter or plane or whatever, and that's what you're going to get. You spend the money, you get better equipment. Same thing with guitars, you know, it's not just the woods, it's all of this stuff combined. The woods are very, very important though. I mean, it's probably 80% of that guitar's sound, or more than that, is from the type of woods used. The build of it, like has been said, 
counts as well. But uh, it's not just about the build. The woods are the main thing. That's why these companies went after it like it was, uh, and it was truly going out of style. So uh, that's a quick update on high-end guitars and low-end guitars and some of the differences in them. Like I say, all that inlay work. You know, the inlay is not that expensive, but the time put into it, if it's done by hand, especially all that stuff, takes a long time. And that's a lot of what you're paying for, plus the the build, you know, and the, uh, the woods there again. What quality of wood was it? Was it Brazilian rosewood, the top quality, or was it the medium quality, or the cheaper Brazilian wood? Uh, it makes a huge difference in the, the price of the guitar you're going to buy. So anyways, I wanted to throw that out there for you, make it a little bit plainer. I've been coming up in Facebook a lot talking about, you know, why, what are you paying for? What do you actually get for the large sums of money that you spend? Uh, we're getting up around 20 minutes, I think, or close to it, so I'm going to end this here. Hope it helps some of you all that wanted to know that stuff that we've been talking in Facebook messages about. But yeah, check out my Graph Tech uh, I'll put a link down below. Graph Tech sponsored one of my videos on, I think it was one on truss rod, one of them on truss rods, how they work or something, I forget. I looked at it, but I forget. But I'll put a link down below. You can check it out if you want. I hope that helps. Cheers to you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys and gals. Cheers.